Hello everybody and welcome back to Chris Bosch Props. Today we are going to do a video on the Creality Otter Light 3D scanner. We're going to take a look at it. We're going to see how good it is. We're going to see maybe how bad it is. I don't really know at this point. So let's get into the video and let's see what this thing does. So this is how the 3D scanner comes in this nice little briefcase with the Creality branding on it. Uh, very nicely packed. Everything is well protected. It also came wrapped in some plastic, but I already went ahead and opened everything. It pretty much comes with everything you need for a 3D scanner. USB cable, charging cable, power stick. Um, you don't have to hook this up to a USB cable directly to your computer. You could just use the Wi-Fi capabilities. Uh, for what I'm going to do today, I am going to use the USB cable directly into my laptop. That just usually with previous scanners has given me less problems. So that's what we're going to do. Let's go ahead and start 3D scanning and see how well this thing works. To hook it up, real simple. You just put it right there. Tighten her down. Pull off your protective film, and then we will hook our USB cable up, which comes right here, directly into the side here, and then you will screw it down. Plug this right in to our laptop. Let's get scanning. All right, guys, so we are in our Creality Scan software. Uh, of course, the obvious, we are gonna select the Creality Otter Light. That's the scanner we are using in this video. If you are using a different scanner, of course, you would pick that one. So let's go ahead and select our Otter Light. Let's view it. It's gonna show you how to connect. We are using the USB connection. We are gonna go ahead and start a new project. That is our save path. And we're pretty much gonna use the default settings except the size of this is small. So we are gonna go small. We are gonna exclude the base. Let's preview this and see if we like it. Because we're gonna have to get kind of right up on Mr. Alley here. Let's go ahead and start our scan. And let's see how he comes out. I'm going to use my finger here underneath the scanner to kind of rotate this turn style. Let's go ahead and fuse him. We're going to do point 0.1 and we are going to increase the point cloud confidence to, let's do 80 and hopefully we'll have a pretty nice 3d model when this is all done okay so we got our 3d model here and it looks really good it does have some holes but we'll just auto close those up let the ai do its work supposedly this has a little bit of ai in it let's go ahead and process it i'm happy with it so we're gonna start a new scan and i'm really excited because i I'm currently doing a proton pack and this is a real crank knob that comes off of the Ghostbusters proton pack used in the 1984 movie and I'm going to try to 3D scan it. I don't think it's going to be a perfect scan, but I think I might be able to get it good enough at least for a 3D print. So I'm excited to scan it and let's see how it comes out. Uh, we got a little bit of noise there, but that's fine. Let's go ahead and process it. Here is the 3D scan of our crank knob. I'll go ahead and close the holes on this model, 
and we will then export it and get it 3D printed. One more thing I want to scan before we get to 3D printing everything is this 1966 badge emblem that goes on the fender of a Mustang. Really excited about this one. I'm hoping it can capture the detail. I'm going to spray some foot spray on here to get rid of the glossiness because 3D scanners don't like chrome glossiness. It won't pick it up. So I'm going to spray some foot powder on here and get this scanned. So there's our 3D model and we will go ahead and process this, close the holes, get rid of the noise and again we will 3D print it. We will go ahead and import all our 3D models into Bamboo Slicer. These will all be printed at 0.2 millimeter layer height and the Mustang emblem will be printed in multicolor. I went ahead and painted it up. Let's see how everything looks. So here is a 3D print of our 3D scan using the alley that came with the kit. And I just wanted to show you guys the detail difference. It is not perfect, but it does capture the overall shape and scale of the original alley. Now this looks like it sits a little shorter because I didn't get a complete scan of the bottom. Uh, this is just one scan. But if I were to get that scan, it would sit up and be scaled. You could tell some of the detail gets washed out. And that's just because it is a 3D scan. It's never going to be perfect and it's never going to be a 1-1 one -one representation of whatever your original thing is that you're scanning. Not bad. Not bad. Let's move on to the next one. So same thing with the crank knob here. This is the original. That is the scan and the 3D print. Not perfect, but it did pretty good on the shape and scale of the original crank knob. Totally usable. And totally usable for reverse engineering if you just wanted to use the scan and build this model from scratch on your own. It is great for reference. This was my favorite scan of the bunch. I used this 1966 badge emblem from a Mustang that goes on the fender. This is an original 1966 emblem and it really captured the detail. This is a multicolored print off of the Bamboo P1S and it looks incredible. I'm really happy with it. I'm actually gonna put this on my wall. But just for a quick scan, it really did the job, guys. So what I recommend the Creality Autolite 3D Scanner the market is really for two types of people. The first person is the one that just wants a quick 3D scan so that they can then reverse engineer the model that you're scanning. These 3D scanners can be finicky. They do take some amount of finesse and skill to get the scan that you want. You're not just gonna get the perfect scan the first try. You're gonna have to learn how to move it how to move it certain ways, left to right, up and down. Every model is different. Every model is gonna get captured different. So you're gonna to have to learn how to move the scanner and you're gonna to have to learn a lot of patience. With that being said, the software itself is also finicky. Sometimes you're gonna lose tracking and when you lose tracking, it's gonna uh, make the model kind of jalopidated and you can't really align it at that point. So you really do have to learn the technique you have to learn the patience and it's for someone that really wants a 3D model of something that they're willing to model themselves. So is it for just the everyday person that wants to 3D scan something and they're going to get the perfect 3D print from it? No, it's not really for that market yet. Now there's probably industrial scanners out there that you can get those types of results and just get the perfect scan. I don't really know, I'm not in that field. These are just domestic 3D scanners for the everyday person, and we're just not quite there with the technology. These things can be complicated. 
and they can get you upset because they don't work sometimes when you really want them to work. And it also might depend on the limitations of your laptop or your PC, how strong it is, the RAM, uh, that might affect the scans. But I've seen people that have pretty high performance PCs and they still have issues with these home use 3D scanners. So I'm not entirely sure on that. They do work. They will get 3D scans if you have the patience to do it. They'll get you what you want, but I highly recommend it more for the person that is willing to do the reverse engineering, that knows CAD software, even Tinkercad, which isn't really like a complete CAD software, but you can use Tinkercad to build the model from scratch using the scan as reference. Now, if you don't care about perfection, this is the other person. If you don't care about perfection when it comes to your 3D scans, you just want a quick print that looks the part and is good enough, and you're not gonna be looking at it with a microscope, it'll work for you too. Because you're not gonna get perfect models from your scan, but they would be good enough if you don't really care about the minute details. You can do body scans, you could do face scans, you can scan parts of a car, and you might get good enough results for what you want. I know not everybody is buying these scanners for 3D printing. Sometimes you are prototyping for a company you work for, or you're trying to prototype something that you want to sell personally, say on Etsy or eBay or wherever you might have a uh, platform to sell whatever you're trying to prototype. It would work for that too. So do I recommend the Creality Autolite 3D Scanner? Yes, but only to the types of people that I mentioned. If you're not one of those people, I would pass and move on to something else maybe wait until the technology advances more. But if you are those types of people, this was gonna work great for you. It's gonna do exactly what you want it to do. So thank you guys for watching and we're on to the next video.